common prayer. I apologize for my microphone that wants to act up on me. And I need, I need the microphone so that the videotaping for the family in Georgia can see all of this, right? Are they live streaming or are they going to watch it late, later? Hi, Georgia! <laughs> Page 299 is where we begin. Let's see if I can redo this. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one holy God called to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your never failing providence sets in order all things, both in heaven and earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear a word from sacred scripture. A reading from the first book of Kings. Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not one of your people, Israel, comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when a foreigner comes and prays towards this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. The word of the Lord. The psalm will be recited by half verse, breaking at the asterisk. Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. And his wonders among all people. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nation, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and the magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord, Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring all praise and homage to his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. 
Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness. And the people A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor by human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are here with me. To the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age. According to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever, amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed to me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him and asked him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself. For I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you myself. But only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. 
and to my slave do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It is a day of great joy here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Um, for Jamie Clapham's parents and family that are watching back in Georgia, what, what is it, 65 degrees outside here? Right? Maybe in the, in, the, in the 90s back there, Jamie? Probably, yeah. With a 90% with a humidity, I know. I'm from Louisiana where you can have 100% humidity and it's not raining. <laughs> Acrimony. Acrimony is rooted in the Latin and French for pungent, acrid, a bitter taste or smell. It means, in general, bitterness or an in ill feeling. Synonyms include anger, rancor, resentment, bad blood, animosity, hostility, enmity, antagonism, malice, spite. Do I, do I need to go on? You get the idea? There appears to be in our world a constant undercurrent of acrimony between peoples, nations, political parties, religious denominations, neighborhood associations, police and criminals, media lovers and media haters, liberals and conservatives, the list goes on and on. We don't need to look very long or hard to see lines that are drawn between people's differing opinions on subjects as far-reaching as taxes, opinions on President Obama's visit to Hiroshima, gun rights, abortion, LGBT bathroom rights, global warming, universal health care, race relations, drunk homeless people downtown in Rapid City, the Civic Center expansion, or, or if you want to get real specific, the stage curtain in the parish hall. I'm glad we can laugh about that. It's, it is a joke. Social media and the news media are propagating an atmosphere of acrimony. More and more there are calls to people to decide which side of the fence they're on for a wide variety of issues. Now many people are having emotional reactions to what they read or hear without investigating the intellectual argument and others are over-intellectualizing their opinions and ignoring the human element, which can be informed by emotion. It's a very dangerous time in our culture and our society. So what is our responsibility as Christians? What are people of God supposed to do? What are we called to say? How do we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in such a bombastic world? What are we going to teach Alexi Ray and Tyson and the other children about the way in which we as a Christian are supposed to respond to that acrimony? First, it's imperative that we not engage in the destructive tendency of categorizing everyone into one camp or another. As followers of Jesus Christ, we must move beyond an us versus them mentality. 
Now this takes an act of the will. This requires consciously being aware of the way in which we develop our opinions and our positions. But then, also, how we articulate those positions and opinions. And, and the way in which we allow ourselves to respectfully hear those with whom we disagree. We Christians are called to be leaders in the world for changing the way dialogue takes place. And how do we do that? Well, first and foremost, through prayer. Our opening collect today said this. It began, O oh God, your never-failing providence sets in order all things, both in heaven and earth. That opening line of the prayer suggests that it's not us humans who will set things in order and make things right. It's God who does that. Now, of course, God can and does use human instruments and agents to help set things right. But those human instruments must possess the humility to know and understand that they are not the ones setting things in order. It's God who is doing it through them. The opening collect continues, put away from us, we entreat you, we beg you. Put away from us all hurtful things. See right there in that one phrase, we're asking God to put away all this negativity, all this trash talking, all this acrimony. The prayer concludes, and give us those things which are profitable for us. Now profitable, of course, is not referring to asking God for a good financial year, though that wouldn't be bad, but to give us those things which are advantageous for us. And we are asking God for profitable things. No, are we asking God for profitable things only for us? Of course not. We are praying for the whole world. And when we pray for the whole world, we put down our acrimonious attitudes and beg of God to take care of all his people everywhere, even our enemies. In our first reading, I am so sorry, Alexi. I'm going to get you somewhere. I promise. In our first reading from 1 Kings, we see Solomon dedicating the huge temple he's built to honor God. Solomon has just moved the Ark of the Covenant from its temporary dwelling place under a tent and has had it relocated enormous temple in Jerusalem which became the center of worship for the Israelite people for centuries. Now we only get a portion of Solomon's dedication prayer in today's reading and in this portion